Oh, yeah. Are we ready? Are we ready? We're having a cup of coffee, or I am. This doesn't make any sense at all, does it? <laughs> like, wow. I've restarted this channel so many times that I've had like season X, I had season X2 and yeah the X stands for, I have no idea what season we're on so I started with the X and uh, if I were to restart everything today we'd be on season X3, episode 1. Let's make this into a joke shall we, I mean, yep, here it is. That's satisfying isn't it? This is literally the most ridiculous thing ever, but let's roll with it. Season X3, episode 1. We're off to a start. Like Jesus. I'm gonna ditch the X at some point and just continue on as it would have always been just like season 3 or something. Let, let's roll with it. Today I want to talk about some down-to-earth facts about having this amazing studio space here as I'm currently having it, the, the space you're seeing. Having it, it's, it's freaking amazing. And not having had this space earlier before, I want to talk about some facts about uh, what it is to have a space like this. As at one point I was probably three or four years stuck in an apartment dreaming about having a space like this. Of course, when you think about it, everything's just gonna be glitter and gold and rainbows and uh, the reality is something a bit different. And that's today's topic. First off, unless you're organized and I'm not an organized person, it's going to be a mess. At sometimes it resembles like a junkyard, it looks like a garage sale or <laughs> everything else except the YouTube studio. And as it's a dedicated space, I can just leave everything here as it is. I have my key light, my acoustic blankets over there, and they're just set up here all the time. And in a way, that'll quickly pile up and everything turns into a mess. So you need to continuously tidying up the place to keep it good looking. And that's a challenge for me. But having this space as a dedicated pure studio is kind of like half the truth, in all honesty. This is my man cave, so I have the chest of filled chairs over there, I can see it have a sip of whiskey, and then I have my desk set up over there, which is where I'm editing, and obviously if I'm studying or anything doing remote work, then it's also from that place over there. And regarding all things tinkering, I, I have, we have a garage outside over there, and it's not heated or anything, so during winter time, as we're in Finland, it might get cold, if I need to do some kind of tinkering, I need to be here in this studio space on that workbench over there and uh, and all of this results in the fact that it's like it's a mess here all of the time to which a tip is to if you don't already have install Pinterest on your phone and look up organizational hacks because there's plenty of tips on Pinterest for organization things and point number three being that the studio however large you're getting it it will always feel too small the earlier studio i had was like almost half of this space and uh when i was thinking about moving in here i was like crazy that this will be so large i don't know how to fill it up i can have like storage shelves over there the seating over here and the work desk and kind of in a way as i have it now but now that i have all of the furniture here it's starting to get a bit cramped here so i'm actually thinking about getting rid of some of the furniture just to make it a bit more spacious. But my tip is that if you're having several options of different studio spaces to choose from, uh, just go with the larger one and you'll thank yourself later. And point four being that the grass is always greener on the other side. Um, You've seen a ton of crazy looking studio setups on Instagram and on YouTube. If you look at them, they're just like, they look so amazingly good. And regardless of who, however you're styling up your studio, you'll be happy with it for a while. And then after that, yeah, you're starting to think about how could you redo it? How could you redesign it? Uh, because someone else has something that just looks like way better. And uh, you start to feel like your studio just looks like shit. That's just, you have to deal with it. 
final thing is that you'll never be happy with it. You might be thinking that once I get this or that set up, then I'll be happy with the space. Then I can just focus on shooting videos or taking photos or whatever you're doing with the studio space. Yeah, but there's constantly gonna be a need for improvements. Either you wanna fix the acoustics, like here I put a carpet covering the whole floor and then I'm thinking about putting some acoustic panels here, which is why I have to use this microphone over here because the acoustics are terrible over here. And then I have to put in the blinds to cover the window so I can control the lighting over here. And then for the key light, I put up a frame in the roof and uh, some wiring for it so I can get the electricity to work. And it's a work in progress. The studio is never gonna be finished. You can set up a budget or allowance on how much you're gonna spend on it. But at some point, you're just gonna want to redo something or do some improvements for it. And all of this is just things I would have wanted to know beforehand, before getting myself into this mess of a studio space. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this rambling of mine. And it's so nice to have you over here and I, I enjoy talking to you. So nice to see your smiling faces or I can't see them. But I'm, I'm imagining that I could see your smiling faces. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you watched it this far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't, just so you don't miss out on a future junk I post here. Thanks for riding fences with me today, and I'll catch you next time. See ya!